Good evening. Um, oh, sorry, wrong. Hi, guys. Uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Oh, and hit that notification bell. And we have done all that YouTube requires, so we can stop and go home. Oh, I already am. Uh, I can't do that. I, after last week's Flat Earth thing, we, I, I've been studying these guys, and I've been learning a lot, and, and uh, I've forgotten the bits that I needed. It's okay, we'll improvise, just like we did last week. And we have a pheasant. Just in case you get bored with Flat Earth, you can look at the pheasant, if he doesn't fall over. He seems to be slowly dropping off to sleep there. Um... You know, I asked the question about what does this flat earth sit on? Well, apparently it sits on a pillar. I have a pillar and I've lost it. There. Like that. In fact, in some cases, it sits on all four pillars. All four? On four pillars. Uh, the four pillars of the earth, because the Bible says so. That's kind of, and the four corners of the earth kind of means the earth square. Not round. So, I'm sorry, but I misled you last week. But for the sake of tonight's discussion, or this part of tonight's discussion, we can say that, you know, it sits on a one... Whoops! A round or square earth sits on one or more pillars. Thus. Yeah, there you are. There's, there, there's, there's the round earth with... Photo backup September 2008 written on it. Um, it should probably be in a case. Um, there's the earth and the, you know, there's the screwdriver, I mean, the, the pillar that, that it's, it's sat on. I would like to know what holds the pillar or pillars up. And what earthly use is a square earth? The problem of course is the language and this is what a lot of the flat earth persuasion don't understand uh, we'll, we'll ignore the excuse uh, God did it for the time being we, look, we, I mean we will come back to that we're bound to you know what do you think I spent last summer day um, but for now we, we will forget about God doing it I just say, what use is a square earth? And why do some flat earthers say that, the, that you know, it's a disc, it's a round disc, and others seem to insist it's a square? Both claim that, quite widely, I, I, I don't believe for one moment that all flat earthers blame God for it, but um, quite a lot do, and some from both sides. So, you know, if, if you believe God did it, and that the Earth is a disc, that shape, I haven't got a square, so you'll, you'll oh, kind of, uh, or if you are a theist, oh, resistors, and uh, think that the world is, well, sort of, it's not quite a square, but you get the idea, can you kind of get something, an agreement between each other as to who is right because at least the, the the globist people all believe that the world is a sphere we have that much in common that doesn't matter whether we're atheist theist or, or somewhere in between we all think the world is a sphere or well, it's not quite a sphere it's, it's sort of flattened at the top of the bottom because it's spinning in a there are plenty of videos to explain uh, the centripetal force that, that causes the, the world to, to sort of squash a little bit. Not that it matters. This looks terribly overexposed. I'm hoping I can calm it down later. Uh, and I haven't got a tipple because I've already had one. I'll tell you what it was. It was non-alcoholic. It was um, Asda's cheap diet Coke. And during the week, I tried it with the black vodka. And I, tonight, I've just tried it without. It's really thirsty. And it's getting quite late. Um, and you know what? It doesn't taste any different. It's disgusting. Uh, we might talk about aspartame at some point and, and other artificial sweeteners. So, you know, we'll question whether this, this sugar tax is such a good thing. 
There was another thing that I discovered about the, the flat earth. It's sometimes square, sometimes disc shaped. It's, um, it sits on a pillar. Uh, the, there is a dome over it. Now, the square people haven't told us what shape this dome is because, you know, it's got right angle corners in it. And it's just so inefficient to have a square earth. I mean, you know, a flat disc is, is pretty daft, but, but a square earth is just mega, mega inefficient. Um, I have theories as to why people think like this. It's quite scary, and I'm sure that a lot of you can probably come up with the same theory. Oh, what was the other thing about this flat Earth? Oh, gravity. It was about gravity. Gravity doesn't exist. It's made up. I'm looking for something that's semi-disposable. Like a microphone. Um, well, watch. Up it goes, down it comes. It's because there's a force acting on it. I'll do it again, just in case you think I was cheating. Both hands in view. Up it goes, and straight into the other hand. <laughs> I wish I could do that more often. Try again. Nope, that hit a microphone, a guitar, and the, uh, and the Zoom. I'll just check, we've still got sound recording going on. Looks like it. Hello? Yes. If there was no gravity, if there was no force other than me throwing it up, it would either have gone up until it ran out of energy, it dissipated all its energy into the surrounding atmosphere and then stayed there. Or it would have continued up until it hit an opposing force, in this case the ceiling. In the same way that if I were to jump and I'm not going to, just in case there is suddenly no gravity, because I'll bang my head and probably hit a lot of other things other than just a microphone and a guitar. And... I could go outside and I could jump and continue off until either I hit the dome over the earth or disappeared into space, one or the other. I think gravity is a given. And certainly it explains why we stick to the earth. It explains why birds fly, would you believe? Well, as a pheasant, pheasants don't fly well, all right? Should have brought goose in. Um, birds fly well partly because of gravity, because they can sit at a point where the force of them going flappity flappity flap across the sky equals, creating lift, equals the force of gravity trying to pull them into the centre of the Earth. They can glide. And they can glide around the curve because they will always fly. But they, they try to always fly at a fixed height. I'm set around here where the seagulls fly at any height they please. And yeah, sometimes that's head height. That's quite frightening. It explains why planes fly at a constant height above the earth. They don't have to keep nosing down because they're not going around a corner. They're flying on that tangent we spoke about last time. Oh. If there was no gravity, planes would have a problem. It's okay, it's their weight. I forgot how silly of me I forgot because I'm not throwing that around again it rattles too much because I'm not throwing a screwdriver around that's asking for trouble but because this has weight it will always fall down it will fall down that's nothing to do with gravity that's because of its weight yeah stunned silence um, why is that down? Um, I don't get it. If that's the case, the the, the, the disc or the square or what, uh, however thick this the, the the earth is, and it's being held up by pillars, why aren't the pillars falling down? Um. 
Okay, should we have a break whilst my brain just quietly turns to mush? I don't get this. I was a lot happier with a round world, which by its own mass generates a gravitational field that tends to draw things towards its centre. And unless those things are opposed by, by an equal force, they will continue to its centre. So as I stand on the ground, there is an equal force pressing up on me from the ground that stops me disappearing into the centre of the earth. If I fly in a plane, there is an up force created by the lift of the airflow over the wing that stops me crashing and allows me to fly at a constant height above sea level around the world. That makes sense. And I was also wondering... No, that's kind of... I was going to say I was wondering about the, these NASA people that fake the pictures of space. And just, why would they do it? What an utter and total waste of money. I've also discovered that there's a big link between flat earthers, um, COVID deniers, um, therefore anti-vaxxers, and one or two of the other more obscure groups we find plodding around the countryside. Just a quick few thoughts on conspiracy theories, because this is where this is heading. I can, I can see if I'll talk about my thoughts on conspiracy theories now rather than get distracted by conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories are useful. There are certain things that happen from time to time that we are told... This happened because blah, 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 blah. You know, really? This happened because somebody did something somewhere and... Yeah. I, uh, it seems a bit extreme. And a group of people grab this and run with it. Um, we don't know where conspiracy theories start. As a rule, we don't know where they start. There are conspiracy theories about the death of Princess Diana. There are conspiracy theories about the 9-11 uh, the terrorist incident. Um, there are conspiracy, conspiracy theories about the whereabouts of Hitler. Uh, yeah, you don't think we need to worry about it now. He, he wasn't a young man. And now we're nearly, you know, getting on for... We're getting on for, you know, hundred years later it's like 80 years later the guy would be I mean he's he's dead all right um, there are all these odd conspiracy theories and uh, when I was working in schools I, I particularly the history department when you would say perhaps look this way um, there's something going on behind me. There's definitely something going on behind me because I can see things flickering in the monitor. It's the VU meter. OK, I thought we were being haunted. That's another line of ghost uh, conspiracy theories about hauntings and whatever. But sometimes you just have to look at them and you think, OK, the conspiracy theory that blah, 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 blah is obviously wrong. I mean, it's just nuts. It's, it's irrational. I... Auntie Mabel was abducted by aliens who soaked her in gin and threw her out into a river in a foreign country 10,000 miles away because they knew if she stank of gin, no one would believe her bleating on about aliens doing whatever aliens do these days. And yet you think, OK, so that, that's unlikely. The official line that she got drunk and went out in a boat doesn't explain her turning up you know, 100 miles away from home or 1,000 miles away from home. That, it doesn't, yeah. What is presented as the truth isn't usually the truth or not the whole truth. It is good to question these things. 
if we are told we're being given this vaccine for our own good, we probably are. Right? Don't have a problem with that. It's not in anyone's interest to kill 90% of the population. Especially when you've got next to kin living overseas who have a right to your money. You know. Uh, you're not going to gain anything by killing 90% of the population. The, the vaccine is for our own good. Is the vaccine safe? Well, there's a certain advantage to telling people it is, even if it isn't. But again, what is the real benefit when, that's, you know, when the truth comes out? You know, it's one way to end your political career, your scientific career, your medical career, fairly quickly would be lying about these things. So on the balance of probability, yeah, the vaccines are safe. They are certainly safer uh, than the disease. Princess Diana's tragic death was kind of similar. There is something not right there. The story that we have been told is not right. The theory that she was killed by Prince Philip is utterly bizarre. The fact that she might have been killed by the British government, again, tell us why. Uh, the, the idea that her driver was absolutely smashed out of his head when he was driving them also strikes me as being a bit unlikely. Because if he was, and she didn't notice it, and her partner didn't notice it, and her bodyguard didn't notice it. Something wrong. Something seriously wrong. Like, you know, you kind of sort of said, well, in which case it was definitely unavoidable. It should have been unavoidable. Uh, and the bodyguard needs to perhaps be questioned very closely about why he didn't prevent that from happening. The Twin Towers. There is no doubt that it was a very evil terrorist attack. That is not going to be doubted. But the exact mechanisms of the failures of those buildings, if you look closely at the video, there's something that doesn't quite fit what we're being told. Any single thing on its own works on its own, but it is not enough to bring the complete destruction of the, of, of the towers. Well, it might be in some cases. And again, you know, speak to a scientist. I'm not quite sure what sort of scientist deals with these things, but uh, probably some sort of super chemist. But jet fuel is basically paraffin. It doesn't burn very well unless it's put in a position where it has to. It burns very well in a jet engine where it's under pressure. Uh, it both from from the the fuel pumps are in uh, are pumping it into the combustion chambers under pressure, and the combustion chambers are specifically designed to burn this fuel very very efficiently and get the, the highest possible temperature. Same as the old paraffin blow torches that used to pump up. A building isn't. It's not a best environment to try and burn fuel. There was lots of it, yeah, but there's kind of a fixed amount of oxygen that can get to it. It means the fire will burn for a long time, but it won't necessarily burn any hotter than it would if you chucked half a gallon on the drive and set fire to it. And you have difficulty setting fire to it. Big jet engines are great help in that. There's something, again, the conspiracy theories that are doing the rounds and saying, oh, this, it was, yeah, listen to them, pick the odd one or two bits that sound plausible and examine them. The bits that don't sound plausible, like 90% you know, of it, throw away. Behind every conspiracy, there is a truth. By the time the conspiracy theory gets to the likes of you and me, 
that truth has gone from really about that much out of that much down to and because it's popular and because i i heard it again the other week people have died after having the vaccine uh, people have died before having the vaccine and people will continue to die after the vaccine I will die. I've had the vaccine. I will die. Hopefully not for a good few years. I had a slightly amusing story. I had a, a pupil, a student, when I was at school. I was, I was one of the first ages. Uh, and they sent for me because this child was seriously hurt and blah, 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 blah. I, I, actually, I don't think they were. I can't remember what was wrong with them. They sprained their wrist or something. Clearly not a hospital or ambulance job I mean it was, uh, but she was it was a she uh, and she was genuinely very anxious no it wasn't it was a boy because I remember it well because I, I didn't expect it from this particular boy and he was very anxious about this uh, and he said am I going to die and I looked at him and I said quite truthfully yes but hopefully for not for another 60 odd years and he's yeah, OK. Thanks, sir. <laughs> We're all going to die. And some people might die very soon after having the vaccine. But the actual death rate from what they're dying from is well within the limits. Not the limits of safety of the vaccine, but within the limits of what uh, the rate of death from those complications if we'd never had the pandemic. Some people are going to die after taking the vaccine, but the number of deaths after having the vaccine is no greater than the same number of deaths from the same causes before the vaccine was invented and before Lager Lurgy escaped from wherever it escaped from. Watch the conspiracy theories on that one coming up. In my honest opinion, we will never know the truth. But keep looking for it. Always seek the truth. God could be described as conspiracy theory. I don't subscribe to that thought. And you know, a lot of my friends are atheists and they don't subscribe to that thought either. And none of them ever accuse me of being dis uh, delusional. Funnily enough, I don't ever accuse them of being delusional. Not because we're too polite, because certainly aren't. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Josh has been called delusional for other things, but not for denouncing God. Um, it's because we learn to accept and respect where each other's coming from. We do challenge each other. But it's two different sides. And... Rather than saying, we're scientists, we're religious, we mustn't talk to each other. I think really, for a greater understanding, certainly of the religious side, you need to talk to each other. And for the sake of world peace, we need to talk to each other. For the sake of the health of the planet through global warming, etc, etc, etc. We need to talk to each other. We need to stop being selfish. We need to stop saying, no, we don't want to do that because we're whatever, you know, British, English. Um, <laughs> we're, if we don't fight with Europe, uh, we'll fight with the Scots or the Irish or the Welsh or, you know, anyone and they'll fight happily with us and each other. We've got to stop that. And we've certainly got to stop it on a global scale. Because... Although I might die sooner than I said, actually I won't because I looked at the stats the other day. I'll probably start to die about the same time as most of my viewers. So hey, we're all in the channel together. Um, well, uh, I keep looking at it. I don't know whether he's showing me the log or what, but the, the image in the monitor looks dreadful. Uh, it looks like I've already died. Um, some of my viewers I know are a lot younger than me. And 
it's their future too. It's their future too. They have a right not to be brought into a world of war and of pestilence and of disease and of frying every summer um, being frozen to death in winter uh, you get extremes of climate um, I don't like global warming climate change is a better description uh, they have the right to live in peace and until all nations and don't blame this on religion it's nothing to do with religion it's everything to do with greed um, until this happens We've got a very bleak future ahead of us. I got a bleak future ahead of me, and I ain't gonna live that much longer. Well, I am. Yeah, hopefully, I'll, yeah, a good few years. Uh, you know, tens of years. I'm not looking at hundreds. Um, but some of you, you know, you could have advances in modern medicine and everything else. Life expectancy is going up all the time. Better diet. Um, you could you could have eighty or ninety years ahead of you. You need to make sure that not only there is 80, 90 years possible, but they're also happy and healthy. And we went from flat earthers to something I would normally say, excuse me, I, I'm just melting, it's all right. Um, I would normally, I, I would say, perhaps more in the context of the Church of the Dispossessed, which in itself is, a, is a highly controversial. It's why I share it here and nowhere else. I don't share this publicly. I share it on YouTube. So if you want to cause real trouble, just share the, the Church of the Dispossessed videos. There's got to be another one soon. With everyone. Everyone you can think of. I, yeah, You might actually then see me being dragged away by, well, I don't know who. Bishops, I suppose. And, <laughs> uh, it, it could be quite fun be controversial always seek the truth seek the unattainable truth and as a finishing note we're going to have a look at a couple of toys in the week and the video might come out next weekend it might come out in, 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 instead of not live live stream um, but I've got a couple of toys to play with this week uh, one of which has already nearly broken my wrist. So, that's that to look forward to. We'll see you again soon. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget, yeah, it helps the channel if you do like, share and subscribe. Uh, the most important, I suspect, is to share. But YouTube like you to subscribe. Doesn't make much difference, really. Share. Microphone's gone to sleep. Uh, sharing, I think, gets the video seen. 2% of my viewers are subscribed to the channel. And when I've asked around, and that's common. Like, share, subscribe. In order, share, like, subscribe. And feel free to comment. If I don't like it, I'll take it down. Bye for now.